In this video, we're going to look at the properties that complex numbers obey, ones that we've looked at in the previous few videos. So the set that we're looking at is the set of numbers Z, such that Z can be written as X plus IY, where X and Y are both real numbers. So that's the set that we're working with. And we have two operations. These best defined if we give two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, with the real parts X1 and X2 and their imaginary parts Y1 and Y2. And addition was defined as the addition of the real part to get the real part of the sum and the addition of the imaginary part to get the imaginary part of the sum. So that's the definition of addition. Multiplication, unfortunately, is a lot more complicated. And this definition shouldn't really be remembered, but you should know how to work it out. When multiplication, multiplying these two complex numbers, the real part is x1, x2, minus y1, y2. And the imaginary part is x1, y2, plus y1, x2. Complicated, but you'll get that if you multiply these two using the normal rules that we use for real numbers. And remember, every time you come across an i squared, you replace it by minus 1. So normal algebra of real numbers will get you to this expression. So, set of complex numbers, definition of addition, definition of multiplication. And we're going to be looking at the properties that these two operations have. And we've seen and used these properties in the previous videos. So we're going to write this as a, a set with these two operations and look at that as a structure, an algebraic structure, a set of objects, in this case complex numbers, that are combined using these two operations sometimes called binary operations because they involve two of the numbers. So this algebraic structure we're going to look at. And to do that, we'll assume that Z1, Z2, and for some of them we'll need a third complex number, that Z1, Z2, Z3 are any complex numbers out of the set C. So, two columns would be useful for this. The first column will look at the properties of addition, and the second column will look at the properties of multiplication. Let me just summarise what we've found so far, in effect, in the previous videos. So, the first property, one that probably is so obvious you might not... Uh, consider it as a property. If we take any two complex numbers and add them, we will get, in all cases, another complex number. This addition here has a real part, an imaginary part. This is a complex number. So any two complex numbers added do give us a complex number. And that same property holds for multiplication. Any two complex numbers multiplied will give you a complex number. This big complicated expression here has a real part, an imaginary part. It's a complex number. And this property is called closure. And you'd say that the set C is closed under addition. It's closed under multiplication. For those of you familiar with vectors and dot product, uh, you'll know that uh, the dot product of two vectors is not a vector. So dot 
product in the set of vectors is not closed. So there are operations that are not closed. Um, let's look at a second property. This one involves the product of th the addition of three complex numbers. And to do that, there are basically two ways of doing that. We could add up the second two, get that result, and then take the first one and add it to that result. And you know that you're going to get the same result if you add the first two and then add the third one to it. That property also is true for the product of three complex numbers. If you multiply the second two then the first times the result of that you will always get the product of the first two times the last one. And this property is called associativity. Associativity. So we would say that addition is associative, multiplication is associative. A third property is the existence of a special complex number that has no effect when you add it to other complex numbers. So if we take any complex number Z1 and add 0, the complex number 0, and notice it doesn't matter which way around you do that, it has no effect on the complex number. We say that 0 is the um, additive identity. So there is an additive identity which is the complex number 0. And the same property for multiplication, if we look at the number 1 as a complex number, as real part 1, imaginary part 0. So 1 times uh, Z1, 1 times any complex number, and again it doesn't matter which way around that's done, you will get the same complex number. So 1 has no effect when you multiply, uh, it certainly has an effect if you add. Z1 plus 1 is a different complex number. But multiplying by 1, the complex number keeps its own identity. This is called a multiplicative, multiplicative identity. So there, they exist. There is an ad additive identity and a multiplic multiplicative identity. So this property, I suppose we could say, is the existence of an identity. One for each of the operations. So property four, inverses. If you're given Z1, there is a special complex number, we call it, negative Z1, and again it doesn't matter which way round you add and do this addition, you get 0, the additive identity. For instance, 2 plus 3i, if that was the complex number Z1, then negative Z1 would be minus 2, minus 3i. And certainly when you add these two, z1 plus negative z1, or the other way around, you get 0 plus 0i. Zero so you get the additive identity. Um, this is called a multiplicative inverse, uh, an additive inverse. So I'll just write that down, additive inverse. Every complex number has an additive inverse. And every is important. This has to be true for all of them. Now, if we look at the same situation for multiplication of complex numbers, is given a complex number Z1, is there another complex number we can multiply that by to get the multiplicative identity? Well, yes, there is. It's 1 over Z1. 
And again, no matter how you multiply, which way round that's done, you will get the multiplicative identity. However, there is a problem. Let's just put multiplicative inverse. There is the problem, and the problem is uh, that Z1 cannot be 0. So we'll put Z1 not equal to 0. So this is inverses, and it's crucial that it's for all. But in this case, there is one complex number, namely 0, that has no multiplicative inverse. You're hunting for a complex number uh, times zero that gives you one. You will not find it. So no multiplicative inverse for Z1. Notation for this um, negative Z and Z to the minus one, which is one over Z. So there's a notation Z to the minus 1 that we would use for this and minus Z, negative Z for this one. So inverse is for all complex numbers apart from 0 in that case. Now the set of complex numbers under addition with these four properties means that we have what is called a group. Any set of objects with an operation that obeys these four rules closure, associativity, there's an identity and everything has an inverse is called a group. So under addition the complex numbers form a group. Under multiplication the complex numbers minus zero, in other words, the non-zero complex numbers under multiplication form a group. So that's the name of the algebraic structure that we're looking at. Complex numbers under addition, all of them form a group. Complex numbers, the non-zero ones, under multiplication form a group. Now, in addition, there is a fifth property that you're aware of, that it doesn't matter which order you add any two complex numbers. And also, it doesn't matter which way you multiply, which order you multiply, two complex numbers, you will get the same result. And this property is called commutativity. Commutativity. And we would say that addition is commutative and that multiplication is commutative. So because that's true, we can say in addition that the complex numbers under addition form what's called an abelian group. So it's a special type of group. Not all groups are abelian, but it happens that the complex numbers under addition is an abelian group. And likewise, the complex numbers minus the zero element, the non-zero complex numbers under multiplication is an abelian group because of this additional property of commutativity. Now that's all very well, but we have basically two separate things. A, 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 group, a, a group of complex numbers under addition, a group of complex numbers under multiplication, the non-zero complex numbers. But what is the connection between addition and multiplication. What's the rule that connects these two things? And the rule is the distributive law, getting rid of brackets, as you, you probably refer to it. 
So we have Z1 times an addition, Z2 plus Z3, and the usual result follows Z1, Z2 plus Z1, Z3. This multiplication distributes itself over this addition. So this is called distributivity. So we'd say that multi or, or multiplication is distributive over addition. So it's of the multiplication over the addition. Um, it's certainly not the other way around. You don't get addition being distributive over multiplication, which would mean that this was the same as Z1 plus Z2 times Z1 plus Z3. That's a very unusual looking uh, rule, and it certainly isn't true in general for complex numbers or real numbers, indeed. So there's distributivity which is an additional property. Now, we've finally covered all the relevant properties, and what we now say is that the, if these, all of these properties hold, and they certainly do for the complex numbers under addition and multiplication, then we're looking at a field. So we'd say that this algebraic structure this set of numbers with these two operations that obey all of these rules, we call that a field. So it's a very specialist term, field, in algebra. It's a whole structure with a whole set of properties. Um, the set of real numbers under addition and multiplication is also a field. You'll discover that all of these properties hold for real numbers. Also the set of rational numbers, the set of fractions, one integer divided by another integer, another non-zero integer. This structure is a field. But the set of integers under addition and multiplication is not a field. Everything holds for integers. Um, apart from the multiplicative inverse. For instance, the integer 2 has no multiplicative inverse. You cannot get the identity 1 from multiplying 2 by another integer. You don't multiply it by half. You have to step outside the set of integers to find the multiplicative inverses in the set of z. So z plus times, that structure is not a field.